I've got another Mega Mail bag. This box here is a bit big. It's also a bit special. It's probably going to be a second video as well. We've got some mail bag and this. There's a lot to do. All right, let's start with this one. This is a Unity light meter, optical multimeter. They call it. Now this isn't a review item. I wish it was, but I purchased this myself because I wanted it. And I want to clear the thing I wanted to test it on isn't here now. Anyway. No batteries. Oh. We'll have to say this is an optical source in here. Optical terminal. I don't know. I match about fiber optic stuff. I didn't buy this for optical. Well, for fiber optics. I bought this for something else. The main reason I wanted this is for measuring infrared LEDs. So I know what wavelength the LED is. Apparently this is supposed to be able to do wavelengths. Let's chuck the back of that. So this cover is actually fairly hard to get off because it's got like a rubber seal around the inside as well. So it's actually meant to be fairly watertight, I think. It was quite tight fit getting it off. It's got little levers here to get it off. So they obviously realised that it needs to be tight. They obviously realised it's tight to get off so they designed it in a way to make it easier, I suppose, which is quite nice. Right, now got batteries in it. Hey, it turns on. Let's see if it can measure any light. Measuring my other desk light here. Well, I need an infrared LED. Let's go and get one. I hold it one right here. Let's hope it doesn't turn the camera off. Obviously it only goes off once. Just do it again on camera mode. No. Don't need just one pulse. Right. It's not giving me a different wavelength of light. This is interesting. Hmm. Okay, so it looks like the wavelength is a manual selected thing. It doesn't actually scan the wavelength, you just choose which wavelength you want to look for the power levels on. So I've got another remote here which will put out a continuous stream of data instead of just shutting off again. So let's shove that in. You probably can't see that too well, can you? Um, so that's doing 4.2 micro watts at 980 millimeters, 3.1 uh, 1300, 3.2 at 1400, 2.6 at 1600. Backlight, does that help? Pull the screen off, does that help? Why is that so bloody small? It needs to stand about this, doesn't it? You should use my merch cup. Perfect. You too could buy your own merch cup to do this kind of thing with your own meters. Mm. So now you can see what I'm doing. So you have 3.4 there, 980 there. So it's obviously the peak wavelength is there, 980. It's weird that it goes all the way up and then back down to 1300. Anyway, so obviously, this is a non-80 infrared LED. Except for the peakers. Sounds good to me. I think I'll do the job. So interestingly, it's got this other optical port just here, which doesn't appear to be doing anything obvious. It's a bit curious. And here's the back of the packaging. Shows the various things that I still see in Chinese, which is really convenient right now, isn't it? And my cat's coming. So this is the UT692G, so it's the leftmost column on this chart which only shows one feature. Hmm. Next thing. This took a little while to arrive. This is a... Four port USB 3 hub. Now I need this on my MacBook when I'm away at events and I want to do video editing. Because I have to plug a few things into my MacBook and it only has two ports. It's obviously an old one, this is a, what was it, 2012, I think it is. One of the ones I repaired, did a video on that. Being USB 3 means I can expand it and have a few things plugged in instead of just two. I think there was only three things plugged in. Three, just one more port, so now I've got a bit more capability. Assuming of course it works okay. Fairly cheap, a bit of example though, obviously. Let's see what's in here. I'm actually a bit curious myself because I don't know what would fit in this box. <laughs> now, one of the things I've ordered, I'm not sure what it could possibly be. Oh, 
as it finally made it. Right. Okay, even better. Let's get this thing around. Okay, oh, that's right, now I'm gonna, now I'm I already had two attempts previously, I think last year, I think it was, trying to get a glass sheet for my 3D printer, my Ender 3. Both times it arrived smashed. Both times got the money back, so that was at least okay. I thought I'd give this a try. I already have a magnetic build plate, this one here, which has had a bit of use, and the, the center's pulling away a little bit. It's still basically okay, but it's pulling away here. I thought you have another one of these, brand new one, I haven't used it yet, I was gonna use it on um, Prince one had a really high quality finish on the bottom, but they still end up in a rough surface finish. So if I show you on this one here, which is what I printed yesterday actually, printed this yesterday, you see the surface finish on this is quite rough. All right, it's not a great finish. I need to get a system which allows me to have a nice smooth finish, and you can get these build plates. Now, which way does this go? That way. So I already have a magnetic plate on my printer, so I'm probably just stick this straight on, as it is. I think this, yeah, there's a film here, it peels off, and it has a textured, slightly textured surface on here, so the 3D prints will stick to it. This is from Two Trees. There'll be a link down below for this, so I'll give this a go. I'm also hoping it'll help flatten my bed out a little bit as well. Help some that takes on the unevenness out of it. We'll see. I did want a glass build plate originally, but... Um, it's a good one years ago because you can bend them and pop the prints off, which is much like you can do with these ones. Let's go and see if this will stick on. It does indeed stick on, so what I might do, I've actually got time today, I might do a 3D print of a precision part and see how that comes out. Alright, so I've got the 3D printer currently running, the only on a new sheet. Obviously it's slightly thinner than this one, so I have to adjust my bed levelling stuff, so we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it doesn't fall off the plate. Hmm. So here. Okay, SMA connectors. These are straight. Well, these are RP SMAs, I should say. Got these as spare parts because I did a repair recently which required these. And the cost each was, I think it's about $15 or something like that for each one um, from RS. They're fairly expensive, or maybe $13 even. These are a couple of dollars each and they look basically identical from the size of it. Anyway, so these are RP SMAs, they've got a pin inside them. You can just see, maybe on that one you can see it. Uh, right, these are some more Perspex panels for my project. I did buy, uh, I think it was 10 panels, something like that. Or 5 panels, that's right, 5 panels. And I like them so much because they're good quality, I bought some more. I don't necessarily need these for my project, but I'll use them for something in the future, I'm certain of that. So these are just nice little Perspex panels. Obviously you've got to cut them down the size, these are 80mm by 80mm. And the reason I've got this size is because in my electrical boxes, these boxes here for the project, these are 80mm, well, about 70 mil wide, I think 75 or something like that. And then once I cut these in half, there's actually enough to do two of these boxes. Perfect size, so all I've got to do is one cut and it's ready. Much easier than trying to cut a piece out of a big sheet. My 3D printer is currently printing on that new sheet. We'll see how it goes, I might show you the result at the end of the video. Ah, there's a clue straight away. It's got these big corner pieces. The one I got last time I had smaller corner pieces in it. <laughs> what to do with those? I'll put them somewhere. But these are really good for protecting packages and there's a test gear. So it's worth ordering it just to get those corner pieces. All right. I've, put, I've purchased this item before so I recognise what it is. Only in a different colour. So I'll just show you that cream box. This is the black one. Because what I was thinking is that the black one might actually look nicer for the project. So what I've got is this 3D printer keyboard, well keyboard trim, which I've made on the printer, and that sits on the front, like that. So I'm trying to decide whether this will look better, or whether this will look better. Contrasting colours, contrasting, or matching. I don't know, I think I might, I think I prefer matching actually. Yep, next one's going to be made in black. Decision made. So how many of these things did I actually get this time? I've actually forgotten. Um, there's two. So I've got eight of these boxes. So that's enough for my project and a few spares for any future projects I may doing, which I want something like this. Always get more than I need. Always. That's probably why I've got no space left. 
Yeah. It's probably shown inside these cases too. So you've got screws that come with it, four screws, some little plugs like feet, rubber plugs, which go on the bottom, and there's also a rear panel as well, because there's a hole in the back there. So you can actually drill this out as required and, and put things on it and then fit it in place. Pretty cool. I like these boxes, they're really nice quality. Very happy with them. Don't forget to click the bell icon so you're notified about new videos. Oh, wait. Wait. Oh, I almost forgot the best bet. I almost forgot this one. I'm going to open it side because it probably won't fall out. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, it's full of, oh, it's part, it's full of peanuts. There might have been this on its side. <laughs> it would make a mess. I think I'm going to have to pull this out of the box off camera because I just don't have the room here. Um, but it came with a uh, US power cable. That's not much use to me, anyway. It might. At least I included it, I suppose. Let's get this thing out off camera and I'll come back. So when I purchased this, I told the guy to package it really well with heaps of padding all around it. Well, this has been repacked by eBay. You know, Pitney Bowles, whoever sends it over. I believe it did anyway. So it's got bubble wrap around it and it's, you know, I'm knocking that corner. Yeah, insufficient. Sure, it's got the, the peanuts in there. Maybe that's how you packed it. If it was how you packed it, then okay, it's acceptable, just. But if he only packed it in this, not good enough. So hopefully there's no damage. Let's open it up. This has come from the US where there is coronavirus. It's been sitting here for a few days, so it's probably fine. The virus, if there's any on here, will be dead. Well, I really hope so anyway. Certainly do without getting it. No feet on the bottom, that's a shame. But it's not that much of a big deal these days, you know, I can just 3D print some more. These actually have a threaded hole in there too, so I can actually stick a screw hole in it, hole in place, which is nice. Although you can't see that because I'm out of shot, so down here. Right, back looks okay, back feet look okay. No damage. Front looks slightly wobbly on that in the corner over here, but I think it probably looks all right. There is some damage on here. That's been broken at some point. I didn't see it in the packaging. I should have a close look at that. Let me check for that in the packaging in case it's still here. Well, there's no bits in the packaging, so that damage on that corner is probably old. It's a Tesco, like this is a bit big and hard to get in shot. So I have to check the uh, the photos for this online as well and see if that was evident in the photos or not. At least it's basically complete. Now you're going to go, what is it? Well, the first thing I should do before I do anything is look at changing the voltage over, which is inside the unit. So I can't power it up yet. Well, I could do it from a Variac. The previous mailbag would have given you a bit of a hint. If you watched that mailbag, you would have seen something arrive which related to this. This is what it is. 5450A resistance calibrator. So this like it's got these dual translucent caps on there. This one's missing. I thought it was from the pictures. It looked like it was missing. That's probably not a big deal. I'll probably make something for that. A bit of perspex and glue it on or something. Right, let's power it up first before I open it in case there's an issue, having a big issue with it. It was supposed to be working, but it didn't really say. It just said used. That's what it said. Well, I've got plugged in my Variac, which is set at 115 volts AC. This is stated 120 volts AC input, so, you know, it's a small percentage under, which is fine. Let's see if it powers up. Looks like it does. The question is, does it work? So let's do short. It's supposed to be one ohm. So these are the calibrated values of the resistors that are inside this unit. Okay, so this isn't a, a selectable resistance box, like you could say, oh, I want 2.76K. No, you want, you just put in well, you know, one or 1.9 of each type, and it will tell you what that resistance value is on the display here, which has been calibrated. You know, it's been measured and recorded in its memory. So what you see on here should be what you get on a piece of tester instrument when you're doing the resistance checks. So let's go through them. Supposed to be 10, 100, 1k. Just turns have a light off, eh? But maybe it's a bit easier. 10k. So, all I've really got to do is check all these to make sure they look about right. It's got two wire, four wire, stuff like because it is a precision instrument, supposed to be for doing calibrations. So, let's just get my, <laughs> my EV blog meter here because, you know, it's obviously super precise. It's 
okay but it's not meant for this really so let's just shove this in the shot and we'll see what we get in resistance mode shall we there we go hmm uh, 100 meg is probably a bit out of range okay let's do, let's do a short so okay let's just check there was leave resistance shove that into there okay so the short is 0.2 ohms on the connector if we do it on the box i'm getting that short is not correct first issue okay let's do one get 1.9 so we're getting about the same offset here, which is interesting. Okay, so that short there, which is varying. Can I switch it backwards or forwards? See that short value is different, is changing. So I think there's probably an issue with that short was a uh, short relay. Because that value is changing. That one's consistent, this one's changing. But you see the amount this is out by 0.9 ohms is also how much that one's out by. So if I go to a larger value, it probably won't matter so much. A larger out as well. 10.2. <laughs> yeah, so you've got some big differences on here. That one looks right. 10 meg looks pretty close. 999, it's slightly off too. But yeah, so there could be some issues with this. I need to actually hook this up to my decent bench meter and see what that thinks of it with four wire measurements as well. And um, look at that side of it. I can just do it up and down. That might be a bit easier, isn't it? So is that 10k or 10? Hmm. That's the ohms, okay. And that's short. So yeah, it's definitely an issue with that short relay. So maybe I'll swap that relay with like maybe the 101 uh, mega ohm. Was it 100 mega ohm relays or something? I don't know. So it's also got bad relays. But that's okay, that's not a total disaster. Maybe I can get the relays apart and get them clean. I, I don't know, maybe. You see it's dropping. It's interesting, isn't it? Contact resistance is dropping. I'll do 1.9 instead. See that one's settling-ish. That's being a bit weird. Yeah, I've definitely got some weird contact resistance problems going on here. 19. I'm not getting it. 190. Not getting it. Okay, this is the actually going to have a look inside. All right, let's lift the skirt off. Let's have a look. Well, the internal panel's still there. That's a good sign. I have to compare this with known information about these things. But there's a chip there which isn't there. And there's a chip there which isn't there. Hopefully, they're not important. No, there's a bunch of them under there as well. Underneath this module under here, there's a whole bunch of sockets with no chips in. Hmm. Maybe it's because of this add-on board up here. It looks like maybe it's been replaced with a different module. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to do a bit of research on this and find out what's going on. So let's open this one up. Let's have a look in here. And we'll see if we can see anything going on in here. Just very quickly, I'm going to do a proper review on this thing. and Well, not review, but proper repair video on this. This is obviously just a mailbag. So I'm have a little look. See what's going on. Right, well... Everything appears to be inside there. There's nothing missing, which is great. At least in this section. This is the most important section. <laughs> Control side, I can live with that. Calibration information is there. I can always, you know, make a note of that. And then rebuild a new controller. It's also possible. It's only a relay controller after all. Once you know what the calibration data is, then you know, don't have to worry about so much. So, it all appears to be there, which is great. I can't see any signs of damage. No burns, that kind of thing. This relay might not be seated properly. Maybe just try wiggling the relays. That one's fairly loose actually. There might even be circuit board issue there. Let's just see if wiggling the relays will fix anything. Never know. Okay, 
All right. Well, look, we're getting a, a closer value now. Anyway, let's go down. Let's get my 90. Yeah, no, nah, not. 19. That appears to not be there. 1.9. It's being a bit weird. So yeah, I've got some interesting stuff going on here, definitely. It should be an interesting video and I get to pull a thing apart a bit more and dig into it. Interesting stuff going on, do you? So yeah, make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon, that sort of stuff, and there'll be a video about this thing. Whilst I try and figure out what's going on with it. Here we go, I thought I'd show you this at the end. It's just finished printing. Ignore the string, obviously my setup's not right. I actually used a PETG setup for PLA. This is PLA material I use for this. Right, and that seems to stuck okay. And that comes off really easy. <laughs> nice, okay, and there's the surface finish. That looks much nicer. Well worth it. Huge improvement. Now you can just see the 3D printing lines. So it's a bit dark and grainy. Oh, let's get some more lights on. Hold on. There you go. Now you can see a bit better. That looks much nicer. You can see the 3D printing lines in it.